Welcome to wireless communication lecture series. In this video lecture, we are going to learn about the cellular concept system design fundamentals. So let's start with first what is cellular concept. So cellular concept is a system level idea which calls for replacing single high power transmitter with many low power transmitters. So in case of 1G, there was only a single big, we can say base station or mobile tower that was covering a lot of users. But as the number of users will increase, it will be difficult for a single high power transmitter to cover more number of users. So now as we are moving towards 2G from 1G, so we are having a more number of low power transmitter and even from 2G to 3G and 3G to 4G, we have a more number of low power transmitter and the cell size is reducing in order to support the more user. So it offer very high capacity in a limited spectrum allocation. Each base station is allocated a portion of the total number of channels available to entire system. So here like each mobile tower will have some number of channel right and they what we will do is we will reuse that same number of channel in other areas okay so we will see this concept also. So the neighboring base station are assigned different group of channels so that interference between base station is minimized. So we have we also need to take care of this interference that neighboring base station should have a different frequency. It, it cannot be the same frequency or it even it cannot be the adjacent frequency. So these are the few main points of cellular concept. So the important part of cellular concept is cell. And here we will first see what is cell. So cell is basically a small geographical area. If we say it specifically, so each cellular base station is allocated a group of radio channels to be used within small geographical area called a cell. So cell will be a basically geographical area. It will have some number of radio channels and that radio channels will be used within those geographical area. Now, if cell is a geographical area, then cell should have some shape, right? So ideally we are thinking that cell can be a circular or it can be, let's say hexagonal or it can be a square or it can be a triangle, right? There are multiple shapes possible. So in the reality that uh, cell shape will depend upon the number of traffic in that particular cell area in the sector and depending upon that cell shape will be defined. But theoretically we have to consider one cell shape and based upon that cell shape we will perform some mathematical analysis. So let's first identify which cell is best for theoretical analysis. So if we consider a circle as a cell shape, then if you want to cover each of the region, then there is a possibility that in a circle, there will be a, this kind of overlapping areas. And in this overlapping area, there will be a interference also. So basically circle is not a good option for us. Even if we will consider a circle with some separated distance, then there will be a, some gaps. And these gaps will produce the blank zone where we will not have any coverage or area. So this area will not be covered. So in this way, the circle is not a best option for us. Now, if we consider a triangle, so in a triangle, we can see that we can cover each of the area. There is no blank zone. Even in the case of square, there is no blank zone. In the hexagonal, we don't have any blank zone. So you know, we don't have any overlap area in these three cases. But still, if we consider a triangle and let's say if we will consider omnidirectional antenna. So for this particular cell, omnidirectional antenna will provide a coverage in all these areas. And we can see that there will be a overshoot of the antenna power. But if we consider a directional antenna, then there is also a problem. So what will happen, this particular cell 
will have a smaller distance over here and at this range we will have a larger distance so if we try to reduce the power here there will be some blank zone or if you will increase the power in this region then there will be a interference in another cell so similar thing will happen in the square also so here we have a less distance but this will be a larger one and due to that there will be a either a blank zone or there is a possibility that we will overshoot so in a hexagonal shape we have almost equal distance in all the direction and that's the reason that for theoretical calculations we are considering a hexagonal cell so that even if we consider a omnidirectional or a directional antenna there will be a almost similar kind of distance from the center and that will not produce any any interference issues so that is the reason that we are considering a hexagonal cell as a cell shape and in order to prove that we can see that if we consider a square pattern over here we have a equal distance d but in this direction we will have a 1.414 d distance so from diagonal center to center cell we will have a larger distance and this will be a smaller distance so there is always a possibility of interference but in case of this uh, particular hexagonal cell shape we can see that we have equal number of distance right if this is a center cell then from each and every center cell we have equal number of distance so for us it will be a easier to prepare a theoretical model based upon the hexagonal cell set this is basically the reason behind selecting the hexagonal cell as a cell set so now let's talk about very important cellular concept that is frequency reuse so as name suggest we are going to reuse the frequency right in a cell so in a one cell if you are using let's say 900 megahertz frequency so then this same 900 megahertz frequency will be used in another cell also but in order to use in such a way we have some conditions so let's see what are those conditions so by limiting the coverage area to within the boundary of a cell so we are saying that we will limit the power within the boundary of a cell the same group of channels may be used to cover different cells that are separated from one another by a distance large enough to keep interference level within tolerable limit so this means if we are only covering one cell with a limited power that means the antenna will radiate within the boundary of a cell then the same group of channels or here let's talk about frequency we can use in a different cell also but the condition is that the distance between two such a cell should be large enough that it will reduce the interference level or interference level should be tolerable so the design process of selecting and allocating channel frequencies for all cellular base station within a system is known as a frequency reuse or frequency planning so here we have one example that we have allocated a uh, seven different frequencies to seven different cell okay so here we have a f1 frequency then we have f2 then f3 4 5 6 and 7 now you can see that the same number of frequencies are also used in another cell so here also we have f1 here we have also f1 and f1 similarly f2 and all those cells but the distance between these co-cells co-cell means the cell that have the same number of frequency so that distance capital d is large enough so that they cannot interfere each other for example in a one region we have a uh, let's say fm radio channel 98.3 megahertz right same fm you can hear in another city as well but there will be a different content right so it is like we will have a parallel existence of same frequency but they are separated by the distance so this is a concept of frequency reuse so now as we have seen that 
in order to use the frequency reuse concept we have we required a reuse distance and in order to calculate the reuse distance d for a hexagonal cell if we use this cell geometry then the reuse distance capital d is given by square root of 3n into r so basically r is a cell radius okay d is the distance between two co cells n is a cluster size and cluster is a group of cell that will cover the whole geographical area right so here we can see that we have seven number of cells that are having some frequency that we are repeating in another geographical area so here the cluster size will be seven so n will be a seven for us and we will see all this calculation in next lecture but here if we consider the reuse factor q so q is basically d by r which is equal to square root of 3 into n so this formula will help us to identify or calculate the reuse factor so now you must be thinking that why we have a cluster size as a 7 why not any other number and uh, we, we will see this point well when we will discuss about the cell sectoring concept but here if you see the hexagonal geometry then the cluster size is given by i square plus ij plus j square equation so here i can be a 0 and j can be a 1 or i can be a 1 and j can be a 0 this can be a 1 1 okay 1 2 or likewise any number so for first two case if we put i equal to 0 so here uh, it is a 0 square plus 0 plus 1 so first possible cluster size is 1 so we have a reuse ratio of 1 let's say and if we consider a 1 1 then this will be a uh, i square is what 1 plus i into j is 1 plus j square is also 1 so we will have a second cluster size possible cluster size is 3 similarly if we have a 1 2 then there will be a another cluster size so so on we will have this kind of number of cluster size and depending upon that we have to also find out which cluster size will fit for a particular concept or particular uh, geographical area so that is also important in a cellular system design now with a cluster size if you want to identify where is my center cell then it is really easy for here we have one example let's say we have i equal to 2 and j equal to 1 right so for j equal to 1 in from any direction in a 60 degree moment you move one time okay and as we have i equal to 2 you move uh, two times in a straight line and you will get the center of a cell similarly in all other cases you will get the center of a cell so here we have another example of n equal to 12 with i equal to 2 and j equal to also 2 so you can see that j equal to 2 means uh, this one right and i equal to 2 means this one so we can in this way we can identify where is my center of a cell and even you can also identify where is your co cell so in order to find out co cell you can also uh, apply this concept let's say same cluster size is repeated somewhere so you can easily identify from this we will go a uh, 60 degree and from the 60 degree you will go to the i equal to 2 uh, somewhere over here we will get the co cell for this particular cell similarly we have example of n equal to 19 where i is 3 and j equal to 2 so here we have one example of frequency reuse pattern with n equal to 7 you can see that we have a uh, seven number of cell over here and this seven number of cell are repeating over the region so this one and one will be called as a co cell and similarly if we go for a co cell for n equal to 19 then we can see over here that this is a center cell and for i and j if we go in this direction for three times and two times we will get the co cell so similarly for all others we can find out the co cells so now we are going to discuss about very important concept in a cellular system design that is a relationship between the total available radio channels and 
the cluster size. So here the total number of available radio channel S is given by S equal to K into N. So S is the available duplex channel in a cellular system. K is the number of channel per cell and N is a cluster size. So let's say you have a 28 number of channels available with you and we are thinking that each cell should have at least a four number of channels so that it can handle the traffic. So now you can easily identify from this equation we are requiring a cluster size of seven, right? So this is how you can identify what is the cluster size required for your system. Similarly, let's say we have a 30 number of channels, right? And we are still thinking that each cell should have at least a four number of channel with the cell. Then in this case, still we will select the cluster size as a seven. But as the cluster size is seven, if we will give a each cell as a four number of channel, then there will be a two extra channel that is not going to be used. The two extra channel will be used in cell where we have a extra traffic. So for example, in a first case, we have seven number of cells, right? So five, six and seven, right? In a first case, in this case, the each cell will have a four number of channel, right? But in the second case, as we have a total 30 number of channel with us, let's say we are allocating a four number of channel to first three cell okay this four cell have a extra traffic so we will allocate them as a five okay this will be four and let's say seven has also extra traffic so we will allocate a five so in this way what will happen all this radio channel will be utilized so this is how the calculation is done now if we want to find out overall capacity of a system then we have to find out that how many times the cluster is replicated. So now if say cluster is replicated n number of times, then the capacity of system C is given by C equal to M into K into M. So basically it is a S. So C equal to M into S. So here we can see that this particular cell system have a cluster size of 4 and it is repeated for let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 number of times. So depending upon that we can find out the system capacity. Similarly we have n equal to 7 case which is replicated for some number of time and similarly we have n equal to 90. So in the end we have very important point that is the trade-off between the overall number of radio channel we have, the number of channel per cell and the cluster size. If you can see over here, let's say in a previous case, we have discussed that we have 28 number of radio channel, which is a fixed number, right? Here, the S is fixed, 28. Now, we are thinking that we will allocate it a four number of channel per cell and we are getting a cluster size as seven. Okay. Now, let's say instead of four, we can use a cluster size of as a four right so now what will happen the number of channel per cell is going to be increased now each cell will have a seven number of cell so the capacity per cell will increase right but your cluster size will reduce and that will increase the interference because your cell will be nearer you can, here you can see that these co cells are nearer but here there is some distance between the co cells so there is always a trade-off between the cluster size that we are selecting and we have to also manage the interference and we have to utilize the available radio resources very carefully. So this is all about a fundamental of cellular system. Thank you so much for watching this video.